Welcome to Basic CRUD Applications with DBase Plus 9. My name is Mike Roslog and I will be the presenter and demonstrator tonight. So what is a CRUD application? Well this is a certain type of a database application that includes four major parts. The create, which is either to create a database or to create a record in a database. The read, the ability to get a record from the database. Update, the ability to update a record from the, update, from the database. And also delete. It's that simple. However, a lot of people have trouble making a simple CRUD application in today's market. That's where DBase Plus 9 really comes and shines. So, without further ado, let's get into the demonstration. As you can see, when DBase Plus 9 starts up, we basically have our command window set and we also have our navigator. Now, if you're not familiar with DBase Plus 9 and you haven't looked at DBase in a while, there's a couple of things that I want to review really quickly. There's always multiple ways to get a job done inside of DBase. One of them is to use the navigator. The navigator is an all-encompassing window that has a bunch of tabs on it that basically get you to the functionality that you want to do when creating an application and or data. So as you can see, we have projects, forms, reports, programs, tables, SQL, data module, images, and other. And in each one of them, you have the ability to set your directory where you want it to be loaded. As you can see for this one, I'm going to be using CRUD example. Now I can go into my table. If I click on my table, you'll notice that I have a set of tables here, and I'm using DB, DBA samples. But I could also come in and look at all of my aliases that I have set up, and I might want to go with dbase underscore samples. Notice there's no difference, and that's because the alias is pointing to the same directory for those DBF files. Once you understand that you have the navigator and you can quickly and easily get to certain parts of the environment, it makes your job a lot easier. When you're going to create an application, you may want to come in and go into the database administration. This is where you get to pick what type of database you want to create, whether you want to create a, a DBase DBF file or a Paradox file, a .db. Once you select that, you can also set up refer referential integrity and also security, but we're going to close that for now. We're set to DBase. Now, if you were one of the fortunate people that actually bought DBase when it was on sale, you got a set of additional utilities that came with the product. And they allow you to use and get more out of DBase, as I'm going to show here in the next section. As you can see, I have four different applications. The first one is DBF export. So I'm going to double click on DBF export. And what this allows me to do is to go in and find a DBF file. So we're going to go in and I said that I was going to be using the dbase underscore samples and I'm going to go into customer and I'm going to hit next. The next thing I want to do is I want to put it into a CSV file. So I'm going to click on the CSV file, click on my structure here to load up that and I'm going to go to where I've got this on my machine. So I'm going to go to documents, I'm going to go to my documents, I'm on Windows 7, I'm going to go into dbase, dbase 9 and I'm going to go to my CRUD example and I'm going to say OK. Now when I say OK and I'm going to say I want to make this, this is customer I believe, CSV and I'm going to say open. Now you'll notice that it puts that in that directory. I then hit the next button. I can then copy all of this information to clipboard or I can do the export. When I do the export, it will take the data from the DBase file and put it into a CSV file. And I can close out of here. The next thing I can do is I can use DBF import. And with DBF import, I can come in and I can do the exact opposite. I can load a database from either CSV, Excel, or XML. So I can go in here to CSV, click on it, and there's my customer, and notice it has a preview over here, and I'm going to say open. 
as you can see, I'm going to make this customer 1, and I'm going to have this as a table level 7. You can pick 3, 4, or 7, and I'm going to have it comma delimited. And when I hit the next button, I can come into here, it gives me a review of everything that I'm going to do, and then I can hit the build button. Import is complete, and I'm done. So I can then go ahead and quit. Now you may be wondering, well this is great, I may want to go out and take a look at the table itself and see what kind of data it has in it. And that's where DBF Inspect comes in. What DBF Inspect allows me to do is go out and find that table, and we just did customer one, so I'm going to open that up, and you notice when it brings it in, it shows all my customers, all of my information. If I click info, I can get a structure of it, and I can get whether it's encrypted, if it has memo fields associated with it, all the pertinent data, and also what level of the data it is. You can do things like print and advanced searching, sorting, and reduction of the number of records that you want inside of this. So it makes a nice little program for doing that. Finally, I may want to use my DBF Compare. DBF Compare is a great little utility that it goes out there and it compares two databases. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go out to that original database. So that was located in my, in my Programs Plus and it was located in my Samples. And when I click on Samples, you'll notice that I have my customer database right here. And I'm going to open that. The next one I'm going to open is the location where I put the new table which was in DBase 9 and underneath the CRUD example. Notice there's my customer 1 DBF and now I hit the open. Now when I hit next to compare these files what it'll do is it'll show me a comparison of the structures and see how they're different and as you can see they are a little bit different however address does look correct and the way this works is when dbf import goes out there it looks for the largest string value that's in there and then it generates that field name so you may have something that you built one way but if you never get to those limits when you use dbf import it's going to make it to the uh, proper size and then you can export this so if we click on this we can come out here and export this into a pdf we can also look at a key to tell what the differences are between the fields and then we can also hit the next button and we can go into here and what it'll say is hey there's a hundred rows and they're identical and you can see the summary of it. There's 110 rows, records comparison. We can also do all records and you can see them side by side and see which ones are out there. So if there's any differences, you can see those quickly and easily. So those are some of the DBF utilities that we've introduced since introducing DBase Plus 9. And we would highly recommend if you do not have those utilities to go out and get those. Now, as I said, we're going to be building a CRUD application today. And so what's the easiest way to build the CRUD application? Well, the easiest way to build the CRUD application is to come in and start a new form. So what we have here is I've already got my database set up and I've already got my directory set up where I want to go. Now before we get into any heavier things, I do want to go over one small thing. I've already set up on my machine a directory with all the graphics, and all of the material that I'm going to use inside of this CRUD application. So just so you know, I have everything located in the single directory. Everything that I'm showing you, for the most part, is included with DBase, except for some of the graphic elements that I'm going to be putting onto the screen. However, textures and the glyphics graphics are definitely included in the DBase Plus 9 install and I would highly recommend you use them and you'll see how we're going to use them here in a few minutes. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create a new form. That's the first thing. Now as I said with the navigator you can do multiple things. You can either do it in the navigator or you can go up to file new and click form or you can come up here to the toolbar click on the new hit the down arrow and click on form or you can come into your navigator and double click on it and it's going to bring up the new form wizard. Now the new form wizard you can either do a wizard and that'll help you set up all of your settings or you can just go right to the designer and I'm going to go right to the designer.
Now a couple of things that you're going to notice when it first starts up. This looks different than many of the other D-based products out there and the reason for that is because I have all of my pop-up windows attached to the side or docked to the, to the left hand side. And the reason for that is because I want the maximum screen length. So as you can see, when I take my cursor off of those areas, they fold back into the side. And it's the same for all of them. If you don't like that, you can, can come up here and say floating, and it'll automatically be floating again. Okay? You can also come into here and say, you know what, I don't want it to be floating, I do want it to be docked. And then you can come in and say that you want it to be up against the side again. So as you can see, very quickly and easily, you can configure the environment to work the way you do. Now, with this new form, we've got a couple of things here. I know that I want to put a textured background on there because I want to make it look a little bit more modern. I want to change the title of the form. And I also want to change the icon that's associated with the form. How do I do all those things? Well, it's pretty straightforward. I can come into the inspector, and the first thing I'm going to do is look for the icon so that I can change that structure. Right here, underneath visual, I have the icon, and I can come click on my wrench, click on my pencil, and I will see that I have an icon ready to go. It's a little world with a down arrow key on it, and I'll say OK. When I do that, it'll come out to the icon property builder, and I hit OK again. Now you won't automatically see that change. It will happen when we do the compile. The next thing I said I wanted to do is I wanted to change the name of the form. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to call this CRUD and we're going to say example dbase plus 9.3. Okay? And that'll be in there as well. The last thing that I want to do is I want to put in a background. And Underneath visual, I have my background. I'm going to click on my pencil and I'm going to find that dark gray background, which is an 800 by 600 window. I'm going to say OK. And you notice now we have our new window and it's ready to go. So now we've done the cleanup of the form. We've got that set up the way we want it to look when we go forward. So when we go into here, we can see all the things that we've done. We know that everything's ready to go. The only thing I might want to do is I might want to change my MDI to false, but I can do that later on. And that would make it so that I don't see the DBase environment behind it and it's a standalone window. But the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and add database fields to my form. And I want to start making that CRUD application like we talked about. I want to be able to go in there and build that application. So how do we do that? Well the quickest way, at least in my opinion, is to drag the table that we want onto the form. So if I go into table, notice I'm set up with dbase underscore samples and I'm going to take the employee dbf and drop it. And when I do that you'll notice that I get two different things. One both of these are considered to be non-visual components. That means that they are not viewed on the screen when not in the designer. So each one of them have their own properties and methods. So if I click on the database samples, come over to my inspector, you'll notice that it set up the database name and it sets up all the information for that. If I click on employee, it's the same thing. I come in and it's showing you the SQL for this one is select asterisk from employees.dbf. It's bringing in my database that we have defined over here into there. And we're ready to go. As you can see, we're now ready to put those database fields on there. But where are those database fields? Well, it's pretty straightforward. If we come down to our field palette, you'll notice that we have all of our fields that are defined in the table. So I can drag over employee, and that's going to be my employee number. And I might want to make that a little bit longer. And then I might want to come into my field palette and I want to bring in the employee ID. Oops, already did that one. So I'm going to go ahead and erase that. And I'm going to go back into the field. Notice how easy it is. I can go first name and I can come in and go into my field, say last name. And then I can go into my field again and say hire date. 
Now, what I'm going to do is, well, I'm going to take a quick brief second and I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to clean up the screen just a little bit and I'll talk about what I do to get the screen to look the way it is when I'm done. As you can see, I've cleaned up the screen just a little bit. Now, the one thing that I want to do is I have that dark background, I have the white screen showing and I may want to take employee ID for example and make it so that it fits in better with the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and go into my inspector and I'm going to come down to where it looks at the visual and I'm going to look for transparent and I'm going to say true. The next thing I'm going to do is put a colon on the end of this and double space so that it looks like so. Now the next thing I want to do with that is I'm going to probably want to change that color as well. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to go down to my color normal, click on that, and I'm going to click on my wrench and I'm going to change the foreground to be white. Notice that that changed the employee ID to be white. Now I'm going to pause again and clean up the rest of those so you don't have to watch. So as you can see now we have basically created our employee and we have live data inside of our application. So the next thing that I probably want to do is I want to be able to start doing the CRUD application. So I want to be able to add a button that's going to do some work for us. So let's go ahead and make the next button. So I'm going to go ahead and push the button and we're going to put a push button down here and we're going to change the size of this just a little bit. We're going to go ahead and make that just a little bit larger and we'll make it a little bit longer. And the next thing what we want to do is we want to make this the next button. But we also want to make it so that our customer can click the alt and then a letter to go to the next record. And we're going to name this the next button. So let's go into our inspector and we're going to go down to the text. And this time I'm going to put an ampersand in front of it and I'm going to say capital N-E-X-T. Notice that on my screen that the button then has an under, underline N and EXT and that's going to be the Alt N to do the next phase. Now this is kind of okay but it would be really great if I had a graphic on there wouldn't it? So let's go in there and let's go let's look at the up button. So right up here underneath bitmap I want to do an up button. Now again, I have all of my files located in the proper directory. I'm going to do a file name and I'm going to click my pencil and I want to go to the next. So that's going to be this green next button. I'm going to hit the OK button. Now notice it comes over. Now the one thing I did notice I don't like this is that it's on the left hand side. I want it to be on the right hand side. Again, easy enough to change. Come up to the bitmap alignment, change it to right and we're ready to go. Now the next thing we might want to do is we want to add the code behind it so that we can get everything to work for this. So let's go ahead. We know we have it next. So I'm going to, we know that that one's highlighted because it's got the dots around it. And I'm going to come into my events and I'm going to do the on click. Now when I click the little wrench, it's going to bring me into my code and I can now start doing what we want to do. Now we put the database on the form. So we're going to start logically with the form. So I'm going to start typing in the word form. And as you can see, I'm going to get the form. I'm going to put a period. It's going to recommend what the next set is. And I'm going to say employee. And then I'm going to dot. And then I want to say it's our row set that I want to work with. Dot. And then I'm going to say next. Now, that is the code that we want. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. And notice that we've got our next now. I'm going to save it. And just for a real quick example, I want to go ahead and run it. Notice this is our live data here. And now when I hit my next, my next is working like it's supposed to be. So we'll go ahead and close it. The next thing I might want to do is I'm going to open that back up. And notice what I did. I hit the red button to close it. Let's go back into the form and design it. And now I'm going to drop another button down. And this is going to be our second push button. And we'll make this same width and we'll make it the same do it that little extra and now this one is going to be our prior button right so we're going to go through that exact same structure so I'm going to go into my properties I'm going to go into my up button and I'm going to go ahead and click on the pencil and I'm going to go to the prior and we're going to put that in there 
After that, I'm going to go into my structure and I'm going to slide down to the bottom and I'm going to change the text to be ampersand prior. And that's going to give me that prior look. I'm then going to go up to my events and click the on click. Now this is where things get a little bit different than some of the other environments that you may be used to. I want to go to the prior. So I'm going to copy that form employee one row set next and I'm going to put that in the location and the only difference I'm going to do with this is I'm going to now say minus one. Okay. So now that we have the minus one in there we can go ahead and close it and I'm going to save it and then I'm going to run it again. Now a couple of things just to make highlight. Notice that our icon is there. Notice the change name up on our title bar. Notice our live data with our transparent background and now we have the next and prior button. So if I say next looks good. If I hit prior, looks good. So we have those buttons working the way we expect them to work. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring that back up again. I'm going to go back into design form. Notice we're in the designer. I'm going to run it. Notice it's running it. Now instead of clicking and then going back into my navigator and reopening it, I can go up to my toolbar and say design. When I click on that, it'll automatically close the running form and bring me back into the designer. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add in the rest of the buttons, but I'm not going to make you sit and watch as I do that. So I'm going to pause it one more time. So as you can see, I've done a little bit of work since we put it on pause. So I went out and created a first button, a last button, an add button, a delete button, and a save button. And I've changed them around just to show you a little bit of how you can set them up to make them run. Now a couple of things that I've done just to give a little bit more flair is on the next button I've actually added in a couple of more things and I want to make a highlight of it. So I'm going to go into properties and what I've done is I have a disabled bitmap and I also have a down bitmap and I have a focus bitmap associated with this. And what I want to try to do is show the differences between how these work. Now I'm going to go ahead and save this and we're going to go ahead and run it. Now notice we're on our first one so if I go to the last it'll take me to the next, 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 prior, prior, prior. Takes me to the first. Looks like I maybe forgot to do one of my buttons. So I'm going to go ahead and go back in the designer. Let's go to last. Let's go into my events and oh well that is probably the reason why because I put it in the wrong I put it on the on close so we'll get rid of that and so come up here and I'll delete the method and we'll go back into our form by clicking on our tab button up the top and I'll go back into the last click on the on click button and now add that in there and now let's save it and we'll go back in here and we'll run it so there it is running so if I hit next 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 if I hit last it'll take me to the last take me to the first and then I can go next 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 now notice what's happening when I'm hitting the next when I push down on it it's showing a down arrow key so it's showing that as it's going down another thing is notice when I tab off of it when I tab onto the next it gets to be a brighter color than the others so that's showing that it has the focus or a hot key so that just gives you some of the capabilities you can do inside of here now I can come in here and add I'm going to add in Mike last name Roslog and 10 10 10 and then I'm going to save that now notice it automatically added me in as 23 and I'm going to go back to first there's that and I'm going to go to last there's that. I really don't want to be in, in this database, so I'm going to go ahead and click the delete button. Notice now the delete is gone. If I go back to first, there's one, and if I go back to the last, it's on 20. So everything has basically been done in this. Now the last thing that I might want to do, as I said before in the early part, I might want to look at my form. Oh, well, because I'm running. The last thing I may want to do in my form is I may want to make this have an MDI frame. So to do that, I'm going to come down to my window and I'm going to say MDI equals false. I'm going to go ahead and save it and now I'm going to run it. 
now when it runs it's running independently of dbase and so I can now bring it out here and now if I hit the alt n you'll notice that it's doing that if I hit the alt p it'll take me back if I hit the alt l it'll take me to the last and if I hit the alt f it'll take me to the first and so on so again that's just giving you a quick example of how you can build a quick CRUD application talking to a database I hope you enjoyed this it's been a lot of fun and hopefully you'll go ahead and continue to support DBase. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. Bye-bye.